Hi, I'm Jorge Perez Perez from Banco de Mexico and welcome to our next video on visualization, identification and estimation in the linear panel event study design. On this video, we're going to talk about estimation and event study plots. On the first video of the series, Jesse and Chris introduced us to the linear panel model, which is the basis behind the linear panel event study design. So let us first recap a bit about that linear panel model. We have an outcome of interest, YIT, which we are regressing on unit fixed effects, time effects, control variables, and on dynamic effects of the policy of interest, Z. These dynamic effects can occur up to G periods in the past and up to M periods in the future. We also have an unobserved confounding variable, C, that may be related to the policy and that will lead to identification and estimation issues. We will postpone our discussion of these issues to next videos. And on this one, we'll focus on how to turn this linear panel model into an estimating equation that we can use to build our event study plot. This is a typical event study plot as you see in applied economics papers. On the x-axis, we have event time and this can be interpreted as time relative to occurrence of the event or to a change in the policy variable. And on the y-axis, we have the coefficients. These coefficients are intended to display the cumulative effects of the policy variable of interest on the outcome. The vertical bars around each one of the coefficients are confidence intervals. So how do we turn our linear panel model into an estimating equation that we can use to build the event study plot. Since we want to show cumulative effects of the policy, we're going to replace the levels of the policy variable with first differences of the policy variable. So this delta ZIT is going to be ZIT minus ZIT minus one. And we're also going to include some extra dynamics in the equation. We want to be able to have some over identifying restrictions in this estimating equation because we want to be able to test if the policy is having effects on the outcome before it was supposed to have effects or after the effects were supposed to die off. So we're going to add some extra leads and lags to the estimating equation. This is the resulting estimating equation. We have our outcome, yit, and we regress that on a sum of first differences of the policy variable zi at time t minus k interacted with coefficients delta k and the sum goes from minus g minus lg to m plus lm minus 1 again to allow for those extra dynamics. We also have a couple of components here that we'll call it the endpoints. This is the right hand side endpoint and is the coefficient delta m plus lm interacted with the level of the policy variable at time t minus m minus lm. And we also have an analogous term for the left-hand side coefficient here. We will refer to the index k as event time, and we will refer to the vector delta as the event time path of the outcome. This vector delta is going to collect these coefficients delta k plus the coefficients on the endpoint terms. On the staggered option, that is when the policy is binary, each unit adopts the policy at a different time and each unit eventually adopts the policy. These variables in the estimating equation have a natural interpretation. Say that for each unit i, the policy starts at zero and switches to one at time t star of i. Then delta z i t minus k is going to be an indicator for being k periods after the policy was adopted in unit i. So for example, delta z i t minus three is an indicator for being three periods after the policy was adopted in unit i. The variable z i t minus m minus l m is going to be an indicator for being m plus l m or more periods in the future after the policy was adopted in unit i. And the policy variable one minus z i t plus a g plus l g is going to be an indicator for being more than g plus lg periods in the past before the policy was adopted in unit i. Under staggered adoption, but also outside of a staggered adoption, and in the general case where the policy variable may be continuous, the coefficients delta k have an interpretation as cumulative effects of the policy. So in a sense, what gives this 
coefficients, their interpretation as event study coefficients is the estimating equation. So the coefficient delta k is going to be the sum from minus g to k of the b time coefficients that came from our linear panel model. And it's going to be the cumulative effects of the policy uh, k periods after the policy was adopted. With those components in hand, we can go back to our coefficient event time plane and just plot the components. And we're going to call the combination of event times and coefficients as the event study plot. Again, the vertical bars around the coefficients are confidence intervals. Now, let me turn to Stata to give you an example of how to build an event study plot using the Stata command XT event. So what I have here is an example data set that has all of the components for the linear panel event study. We have an outcome variable of interest Y, a policy variable of interest Z, units I, and time T. Let me remind you that to install the command XT event, you can just type SSC install XT event. Now, to estimate this event study, you can first declare the panel nature of your data set, which we do but with XT set IT. Now, to estimate your event study, you can type XT event, the outcome variable of interest Y, the policy variable of interest, in this case Z, in a window around which you want to estimate the event study. XT event then estimates a regression with unit fixed effects and time effects by default, and it estimates these coefficients under line K that are the delta K coefficients of interest. The coefficient on under line K equals minus one is missing, so these coefficients are normalized to the effect of the policy at time minus one. Now, to build an event study plot, you can just type XT event plot after estimating, and this gives you an event study plot. Now, when you see this plot, you may notice that there's a lot of extra components relative to the plot we had seen earlier. This is because we are suggesting additions to the event study plot to make it more informative. On the next video of the series, Simon will tell us about suggestions to improve the event study plot and make it more informative. Thank you for watching and we hope this video is useful for you in your research.